This week we get a new sneak peek at a highly anticipated indie sequel now made in the Gato engine, we dive into a useful prototyping add-on, and we have one of the better 3D graphical tech demos ever in our five games made in Gato. I'm Stay at Home Dev, and it's This Week in Gato. Before the end of the year, Megacrit released the first gameplay trailer for Slay the Spire 2. Now, if you're not up to date on Slay the Spire 2, it was originally being built in Unity, and then Unity decided to destroy any faith. You remember that giant licensing fee that they tried and then got rid of? Well, the damage has already been done, and a lot of the developers that had switched from Unity to Gato now have something to show for it. So what does this gameplay trailer actually show us? Well, for one, it's Slay the Spire 2, but it also shows us that the Gato engine is more than capable of making a game like Slay the Spire 2. Now the hope is out of this comes a really solid game, but also through the process of making a game like this, which knowingly is going to be played by a lot of people on a lot of different consoles, that there are some things that the Megacrit team has encountered or created within the engine that they can then deliver to the rest of the community. Those things could be tools or optimizations or even changes that they made to the engine itself. Additionally, there were two web pages that I came across that kind of caught my interest. The first is a, an editorial article that was written on gamedeveloper.com. Now, if you don't know what gamedeveloper.com is, they're associated with GDC and they're pretty big. Now, the article is entitled Game Developers 2024 Wrap Up Five Devs That Made an Impact. And guess what's number one? I wanted to talk about this because it, it points out a really interesting thing that connects to Slay the Spire and, and having it switch from Unity to the Gato engine. Gato's success validated the idea that no one company guards the gates to the world of game development. If it or any other game engine fails its users, developers can breathe a little easier knowing somewhere out there will be another tool just as capable for their needs. Now that's part of the reason why I've made this channel, why I'm making these videos. The Gato engine is important, and it's important because it's the alternative. And having that alternative gives power back to developers, particularly indie developers. And that brings me to the, the next web page of interest. The Gato Engine website recently released a priorities page. Now, if you haven't seen this, what this page does is it, it provides a, a huge wish list of things that the, the community wants, that the developers want to work on. It focuses it into a couple of different categories. First is core with things like physics, rendering and animation. You have the editor, you have platform specific changes. Now within each of these categories, you have a, a change that they want to focus on. For example, um, within physics, we talked about this last week, integrate Jolt as the default 3D physics engine. It provides some information about why this is a, a priority and also connects any pull requests that are connected to that priority. Now you're gonna look through this page and find some really juicy things like add a deferred renderer like Unreal or implement GDScript refactoring tools. Now these things aren't necessarily going to happen right away, but they are coming and they're being worked on. And if it's something that you can work on and you can provide some help on, there's actually an area here at the top about how to contribute. You can go to that page and see how you can get involved in this process. Now, if you want to contribute to that priority list, but have no idea where to even start, or maybe you don't even know how to code, you might be interested in the sponsor of this week's video, Cody. Cody is a practice-driven website for learning how to code. You can get access to free or pro-level courses and coding challenges across major coding languages like Python or C Sharp. There isn't GDScript, but the Python courses will give you a great foundation that can then be migrated over to GDScript pretty quickly. You can learn about object-oriented programming, how to use lambdas, or jump into C Sharp and follow the very basics like variables, operators, or flow statements. The course screens provide guidance and a script editor side by side. Challenges ask you to write new code and the site will check your results providing you XP if you're correct. If you're new to programming and don't know where to start, Cody is definitely worth checking out to see if you like the free courses with even more to offer at the pro level. And now for the Gato tip of the week. We're taking a look at meshes, specifically importing meshes. The recommended file type for a mesh import is usually a GLB file. And that contains pretty much everything you need within your mesh. So I've imported a, a GLB file and you'll notice that I'll have the, the diffuse, the normal and the roughness textures. But what I don't have is the actual mesh resource. 
For example, if I wanted to take this box over here and swap in my GoBot mesh, I can't actually do that the way it is currently. I need to get that mesh resource. After you import your GLB file, you can double click that to get the advanced import settings. You can also get there by clicking on the file and then going to import. On the left side, you'll see the packed scene that's created when you do the, the import process. And in it, you have your, your node structure, which includes a, a skeleton in this case and a mesh instance, and then our, our actual mesh resource. That's what we want. And you'll notice on the right side, we have a save to file option that's not enabled. Now, if we en enable that and we select a path, for example, let's go to models and we'll set this and, and save it as go bot and save that. Then we re-import that. Down here, you'll see a new file. This is our GoBot mesh resource. This can be put into a mesh instance 3D. Now this doesn't have all the other information like your, your skeleton or your, your animations, and that's fine. In a lot of cases, you just want the mesh and that's how you do it. So go to advanced import, save to file, enable that, and then select your path. You're good to go. Our plugin of the week is also dealing with meshes and specifically the conversion of CSG meshes to typical meshes. Now, if you've never heard or used CSG before, it stands for constructive solid geometry. And it's basically a really easy and quick way to generate level geometry. Now, the issue here is once you have all of that CSG geometry, what do you do with it? You don't want to actually ship it with CSG. It's, it's not as performant as just meshes. One way is to convert it, and that's what this week's plugin does. Go to the asset library and type in CSG, and you're going to have a lot of them pop up. A lot of these are actually going to work fine, but there's one specifically that I want to show, and that's the CSG converter right here. Once you have that installed and you've enabled that plugin, you can go into uh, a 3D scene that you have into a CSG box that I've set up here, for example, just a basic cube. And then I've done a, a subtraction child from that to create a little, uh, a little hallway here. When you click on that parent node, you'll notice you now have a, a CSG submenu item. And if you click on that, you can convert the selected node to either a mesh instance or a static body. So let's go ahead and convert it to a mesh instance. Now you've replaced that CSG with an actual mesh and you've also kept your material. Some of the other plugins don't keep that material. Now, if you wanted to convert that into a static body, you can do the same thing. You select, go to your menu, convert selected, and then static bodies. And you've got your static body node, your collision shape node, it's all ready to go. Outskirts is more walking simulator than game at the moment, but that's because it's a 3D graphical showcase to show off the capabilities of the engine. We've had some really good 3D demos in the past, but the environment here is what really stands out. Set in a fictional 18th century Dutch town, the demo makes use of vertex blend texturing, old fashioned fog techniques, and some really awesome artistic direction. Number two. A wondrous co-op adventure for two players, Our Journey features asymmetric roles that rely on creative communication. As a hero, you'll roam through the world performing physical actions and gathering necessary artifacts, while the spirit conveys cryptic messages through cards and symbols. Together, both roles must decode each other's clues to traverse diverse biomes, meet intriguing characters, and secure vital equipment. The focus here is on teamwork, and you're going to be forging new paths, and collaborating to overcome all the obstacles you encounter. Locked in the swirling depths of a forsaken space station, you awaken with lungs burning from a strange fluid. Hangar 8 is a psychological horror game that blends sci-fi exploration with a haunting spot the difference mechanic, challenging you to spot and report anomalies as you creep through looping corridors. Randomized disturbances from subtle environmental changes to terrifying creatures keep each run unpredictable. While hunting for six key items and reading Lost Crew logbooks, you'll also unlock new horrors and piece together the station's grim past. Chaos meets Speed in Dragon Gate, a high-stakes sci-fi combat racing game for three to six players. Deadly sprints demand quick reflexes and cunning strategy as any racer lagging too far behind faces annihilation by a massive orbital beam. Bolster your ride with powerful weapons like Gatling guns or portal cannons, then watch alliances form and crumble as rivals fight 
to reach 10 points first. Even elimination doesn't mean the end. You can still have vengeance by unleashing homing missiles from the sidelines. Just don't let your hopes go up in cosmic dust. And before we get to our last spot, congrats to last week's winner, Thousands. Be sure to vote for your favorite in the comments to have them included in this year's Gato Game Awards. And like last year, just because a game doesn't win its week, it doesn't mean it can't be included in the awards. Number five. Neon-coded subcultures light the way and hacky, a cyberpunk typing simulator that thrusts you into the role of an elite hacker. Simple commands let you infiltrate networks and snatch valuable data, all while avoiding a skyrocketing system alert. No coding knowledge is required, just type, strategize, and push deeper into pixel art cyberspace for increasingly bigger rewards. Between roguelike sessions, you'll collect chip data to unlock new operating system types and powerful upgrades. The question remains, how far can you go before the system shuts you down for good? 